the behavior panel. Live News has learned about major developments today in the disappearance case of Tiffany Foster in Coweta County. The mother of three has not been seen since early March 2021. Fox 5's Doug Evans has information on the new charges now filed against her ex-fiance, including murder. It was an emotional meeting here at the Coweta County Sheriff's Office between investigators and Tiffany Foster's family in which they learned that investigators have evidence now that Tiffany Foster was murdered and is never coming home. He deserves everything that's, that's going to come to him. Kimberly Bryant talking about her sister's former fiance, Reginald Robertson. The family learned in that meeting with investigators that they've taken out warrants that allege Robertson is responsible for Tiffany's 2021 disappearance and her death. As of 10 o'clock this morning, Reginald Robertson has been charged with felony murder, malice murder, concealing the death of another, rape, kidnapping, false imprisonment forgery in the first degree, financial transaction card theft, and financial transaction card fraud. My sister was such a sweet person, man. She was a very loved person. Like, like why would somebody want to hurt her? Tiffany Foster was reported missing on March 2nd, 2021. Reginald Robertson told investigators he saw her leave their apartment to go to the store the day before, and she never returned. The mother of three vanished without a trace. After two and a half years on the case, investigators say they now have evidence of horrific crimes against Tiffany over a two-day period. We have been able to uncover a lot of evidence in this case which shows that the relationship between Reginald and Tiffany was not good at all for the last week of her life. At a March 23rd, 2021 family news conference at the sheriff's office, Robertson was not scheduled to speak. But I asked him if he wanted to step up to the microphone. Here is part of what he had to say. I'm um, her fiance. Um, and if anybody do know anything, um, could you please, you know, contact this uh, office and let them know. Like I said, no matter how small or big, because um, it's, it's just unusual. She would never not go without talking to those kids, you know. Even me, you know, she would not go without talking to me, you know. All right, yeah, Greg, what do you got? I don't have much. I, people are onions. I'm going to start by saying that, you know, when we think of people, we think about the outside coding of somebody and you're trying to put a picture to them, but people are onions and whatever they've been exposed to over time, just continually nests and nests and nests. So let's first of all say we don't know what experience people have, why they, you know, whether they're uncomfortable because of what's going on in the in the actual briefing, whether they've ever stood in front of a camera, whether it's law enforcement, who knows? Who knows what makes people uncomfortable? But this guy's certainly uncomfortable. So when we talk about liar's loop and we say there's a trigger, the trigger in this case is his girlfriend is missing, then you get to fabricate. Well, it depends on how, number one, how bright you are and how together you are as to what you fabricate. And that goes both ways. If you're really smart, you probably don't overfabricate. If you're not really smart, you probably don't overfabricate. So somewhere in the middle is probably the sweet spot for finding people who overfabricate. Now, he's clearly not overfabricated. He's not thought out even the simplest of questions as they start up. And so you see his shoulders rising and his respiration increase and his blink rate increase when he's asked the simplest of questions. He has an unfortunate adapter. If I were going to be in trouble for my girlfriend missing or anybody wondering if my girlfriend were missing, that's the finger I would probably not adapt with. And we can't see the rest of his hands, but we do see his left index finger gripping when he is doing something. And Chase, I know you're going to talk about digital flexion, but when I think about digital flexion, usually it's all fingers, not the one. So it's kind of an unfortunate way to look. Uh, he's kind of got a fry to his voice, and he's also insulating. He's throwing out information that really doesn't have any real value. And we talk about insulator, we talk about stancer, transfer, insulator. Insulator's throwing out data for you to pick up on and then try to run with it. He's trying to put out a little information about here's what happened usually she would not go without talking to me. oh yeah and not without talking to me so all of that is him giving something for you to pick up on he also does something trump was really bad about once he makes a point sniffing 
that could be related to his increased respiration, but likely it's related to his changed thoughts. Once he's finished with the first thought, he goes to the next. And there's a minor lip compression in here. All of that together doesn't mean he's lying, could mean he's uncomfortable because he's in front of all these people, could mean he's uncomfortable because of where he is. But it certainly gives me a whole lot of focus on him to say there's a lot of stuff going on here and I want to know why. Chase, what do you got? This sounds to me, I, I absolutely agree, Greg, but this sounds to me like a, a person reluctantly reading off of a cue card. Like they don't want to be there. They were, they're trying to lose the movie deal. They don't want to get hired for the, for the role and they, they have to read off this cue card. It feels really rehearsed. Uh, there's a lack of emotion. There's no emotion at all. Uh, no sadness. And obviously we see there's no hope to get anyone back. There's no hope that anyone's safe. Uh, the story is about his innocence. So we're seeing some of those four things we talked about right away starting to stack up here. And lastly, if she wouldn't leave ever without talking to you or the kids, why wait till 1 a.m. to freak out? So that should have been a very unusual moment from the get-go. So it's just what Greg said in the last video. Those small details are stuff that we would pick up on and say, wait, if she wouldn't leave without talking to you, then why, did, why wasn't it a big deal when she left? Uh, Mark. Uh, yeah, so I agree with you there, Greg. Um, you know, first off, I start thinking to myself, very quiet, very quiet, very kind of, you know, pinned down, uh, minimizing. And, and if it were me in that situation, and, and as everybody points out, I'm a little bigger than most people anyway, but I, I would be trying to get my message across. There would be a lot of gestures from me. This is my chance to go, look, you know, look out for her. Here's what she looks like. I don't know where she is. Let's find her. I would be more emphatic. He's very quiet. He's very subdued. He's very hemmed in there. And so instantly I have to think that's a bit odd. But at the same time, just as you say there, Greg, I've got to go, well, I don't know whether he's ever been on camera before. He's probably never been in this situation before. So we don't know how he's going to react. And we've got nothing to baseline him again. So, so I kind of go, okay, well, let's just, let's just discount that. And then there's some stuff in his favor, which which this double shoulder shrug on um, on it was unusual. You know, it does have an air of like, I just don't know. I don't know what's going. This is odd. It's unusual. I don't know what's going on here. So so we could read that as quite congruent. So at the moment, I got nothing to go on other than there's a really nice, um, uh, really nice electro voice mic down there that's really picking up some finer points of what's happening in his mouth. And I'm hearing a lot of vocal um, clicks in there, which come from the mouth kind of sticking together, it drying out there. And you, you really pick up those moments where, you know, the mouth doesn't quite know what it should be doing or whether it said the right thing before or after. There's a lot of that going on. It's picking up really well on the mic. And so I want to dig into that because I'm thinking, yeah, there's something else. Now again, yes, it could be nervousness about the situation. You don't tend to get that many. You tend to get one before somebody starts speaking and then they're into it and then the whole event takes over. But here it's, it's all the way through. So a little red flag for me uh, there. Um, Scott, what do you got? Yeah, I agree with all you guys. There's no emotion in this. And the telling part for me was when they first asked him the question, and that's when I stopped it and started him, um, started the video of him, is when he braces himself to get ready. So, Chase, yeah, that does ring back to your thing, him being prepared. And it's, so I believe he, he was ready for that. And, Greg, going back to your point about the trigger finger, let's talk, and, I, and I'm going down a road Mark usually goes down, let's talk about what he's wearing. He's wearing the classic uniform you see when you go to the shooting range. He's wearing the hat. You know, it's got that, that uh, it, it's the same style hat, not just a baseball cap, but it's that same style hat when you go to the, uh, to the range. He's wearing that dark uh, shirt with a shirt under it that's zipped up. That's what you wear when you carry. Doesn't mean he's carrying, but I'm saying this guy, I think he's familiar with, with weapons. So that goes back to your thing, Greg. About maybe he's maybe when they find out what happened, maybe he shot this 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 woman. I don't know, but he sure looks like that 
that type to me from from just what he's wearing. Because I would get ahead every time somebody comes in wearing something like that. I always go heads up, whether they're a good person or a bad person. You don't know, but I keep an eye on him. Uh, it makes me do that. Um, he's a little bit tra- he's a little bit too quiet. I agree with all you guys. He's really quiet. And he's trying to control what's going on, and he's trying to be really still. But he's the more he tries to be still, the odd the the, the, the odder I guess you'd say he he tends to look. He looks weirder and weirder as it goes along because he just tries to, and he's, he's just, he doesn't blink a whole lot. His blink rate's really low, and he's just looking straight ahead. Probably, I think you're right, Mark, I think he's probably nervous. You know, but I do think this is this is what he's planned out in his de-conflict, uh, deconfliction section of the liar's loop. He said, here's all the things I got I to gotta point out so I can cover everything. And he does as he goes along. We're going to see a couple other videos. So he covers pretty much everything. So that's what I got. Yeah, Scott, I think you're pointing out the concealed carry. Takes one to yeah. know one is the problem. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. yeah, that's true. That's true. Then you, when did you suspect something was wrong? How long did that take? Um, when it got late at night, 10, 11, and I figured, because he should have been home by then. And I was calling, but the phone kept on the voicemail. So I figured wherever she at, I don't know, maybe the phone dead. And then after I, I don't know, after I sit around for a while and doze off to sleep, when it get about one in the morning, I know something definitely wrong because she's she's not going to be out after no one o'clock. <laughs> Just one more thing. All right, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so the story as I can pick it up here is that she goes out to the the shops. Uh, or some errands, and then she's not back. There's concern because she's not back by 10 or kind of 11 o'clock. Well, what does she do? Does she keep tigers or something? I mean, is is she out going for milk product or something? It's like, I don't know. The only reason you're out that late on an errand is is milk for your tigers, as far as I can understand. So that's odd anyway. But then the whole story of he just kind of dozed off until 1 o'clock and only comes concerned at one o'clock in the morning. Well, I, I just want to, I just want to go into that in terms of just a, a lifestyle and logic. You know, that's all. I don't get the lifestyle. I don't get the logic. So I would be in on that. There's some red flags on that. Look, I, all of you out there will be able to go, yeah, I think there's a really good reason why. And I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a really good reason why, but. I want to know that reason. I want to feel comfortable with that reason. And I want somebody to tell me that reason in a way that I go, that makes sense. You are honest about that. There's a, there's a, a clear story and your body language was congruent with that. Good. Let's move on. At the moment, I can't move on from just the premise of what's being talked about there. But, you know, maybe tigers are involved. And so all bets are off. Uh, Chase, what do you got? Totally agreed. I think he also makes a huge mistake of making an innocence announcement instead of a request for help. Here's the Facebook group I've started. Go to the news channel's website. Say, just do anything. Save her picture to your cell phone. Just do me that favor. You might see her later. You might have to compare it to something. Some kind of request for help would be good here. Uh, there's no emotion. There is zero concern. Uh, there's no request for help. It's everything is vague and ambiguous. And when he's saying he's very uncertain wherever she's at, I don't know. Uh, Just and right when he says those words, you'll see a single shoulder shrug with an outward elbow joust, which means some disagreement and uh, potentially uh, some some anger there. Uh, Scott, what do you got? All right. Yeah, I agree. No motion whatsoever. I, I, there, there's nothing there. He's still trying to control the way he's moving, those types of things. But boy, he sure leaves a lot of time open in there. He sure leaves a lot of, well, this happened from, we don't know anything about the timeline, really. All we know is 10 or 11 came up, and then at 1 o'clock he woke up. There's a lot of time in there. And those little kids probably go to sleep early. So he had a lot of time to get done. If he was going to do something, had a lot of time in there to get it done. And what are they going to do, be witnesses? No. So I think probably... Um, those are very telling, and however this ends up, I think that's that that's going to come into play because he's completely creating time in there where there's you know not a whole lot happened between you know nine and eleven, and then eleven to one I was you know I went to sleep and then I woke up at one. Not it's just it's just too 
this is one of those things you look you look at and go, nah, let's let's move along. Let's, we need to talk to this guy. So I, uh, it's another one I can't believe is out walking around. Greg, what do you got? So interrogation is the art of getting the most information in the short, shortest period of time. That's the definition of interrogation. One of the ways to frustrate an interrogator is to hide time. Because if you hide time, you make them work harder to get the information. It's a way of getting away from lots of things. Well, there's certainly some time hiding here. 10 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Okay, all that. When did you first notice? Funny when he says that. This is one of those fortunate times to have very small eyes like I do. You wouldn't notice my eyes bulging open. His, his lids open immediately. Like, uh-oh, didn't think of that question. He starts to illustrate with his finger again. He gives too much detail then. Uh, it was this and this and this. He swallows heavy. There's some breathing change. You see his, his respiration increase, his blink rate go up, and then he makes too much eye contact as he's answering the question. We call that romancer in, in our course. And what we're looking for when we say romancer is I'm paying really close attention to you because I want to make sure you believe what I'm saying. And any nuance, any subtlety and change, I'll pick up on. That's the romancer piece. By the way, you don't need to be trained to know how to tell when something changes. Mark, I think you did a great job a couple of sessions ago to say change is really what we all are looking for. And we all can recognize change. It's how wives catch husbands, husbands catch wives, how mothers know their kids are lying because things change. And that's what we look for. Too much eye contact. Then he drops downright. And downright is the place we keep emotion. It's where we have emotional information. Then he thinks through what he's going to say, drops back to his left, comes back up. And after he delivers his message, he goes, again, there's a sniff. That's record keeping. In a lot of people, that's how they keep records that they're done with that topic and they move into the next. It would make me dig in. Doesn't mean he killed her. Doesn't mean anything. By the way, Mark, I think she goes to school at night. She's uh, this, this young woman is in a, uh, uh, I think it's, one of the criminal justice or something at Georgia right. Military College. I just looked right. her up this afternoon. But yeah, I, this is enough to cause me to have red flags and to dig into him. The final question, where is Tiffany Foster? Investigators say they hope to have the answer to that very soon. In Coweta County, Doug Evans, Fox 5 News. Sí, no, 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 no,